G'day all, Noob Miner 72 here. Welcome to episode 7 of yet another History of the World. I do apologize that this is a week late. Um, things have been pretty hectic at work. I've been um, preparing stuff for uh, my long service leave because I'm now going to be on leave for three weeks, so that's pretty ace. Um, so do I'm sorry that this was late. So those of you who are watching it... Um, or oh, listening to it uh, straight away, I do apologise. Those of you who are watching this or listening to it later, well, you won't even notice. Anyway, today in this episode, we're going to be looking at the next period of um, Earth's history, and that's the Ordovician period. Um, and let's get cracking. The Ordovician period is a geological period that occurred approximately 485 to 443 million years ago, making it the second period of the Paleozoic era. It is named after the ancient Celtic tribe of the Ordovices and is marked by significant geological and biological events. Stages of the Ordovician period The Ordovician period is divided into three stages each characterized by specific geological and biological events. These stages are, in chronological order, the early Ordovician from 485.4 to 470 million years ago. Um, during the early Ordovician, the supercontinent Gondwana occupied much of the southern hemisphere Shallow seas covered a significant portion of the continents, leading to the proliferation of marine life. Trilobites, brachiopods, graftolites, and various other marine invertebrates uh, flourished during this stage. The climate was generally warm and sea levels were relatively high. The Middle Ordovician um, 470 to 458.4 million years ago uh, the Middle, Middle Ordovician continued to see the dominance of marine life, with trilobites and other marine organisms continuing to thrive. Sea levels remained high, contributing to the persistence of shallow seas. The period saw the expansion of early jawless fish, representing a significant step in the evolution of vertebrates. Mountain building events such as the Taconic Orogeny in North America and the Grampian Orogeny in what is now the United Kingdom and Scandinavia contributed to tectonic activity and the formation of mountain ranges. The late Ordovician was um, 450, 440, sorry, 450. 8.4 to 443 million years ago. The late Ordovician was marked by significant geological and climate, uh, climatic changes. Towards the end of this stage, the climate cooled and glaciation began in high southern latitudes, leading to a drop in sea levels. This cooling and sea level drop likely contributed to the Ordovician Silurian extinction event one of the major mass extinctions in Earth's history. The cooling climate and fluctuating sea levels may have disrupted ecosystems and led to the extinction of many marine species. The end of the late Ordovician marked the transition to the subsequent Silurian period. The stages of the Ordovician period are not only characterized by the changes in Earth's ge geology, but also by the evolution and diversification of life, particularly in, marine, in the marine realm. Trilobites, brachiopods, eucephalites, sorry, cep cephalopods, and early fish played key roles in shaping the ecosystems of this period. The transition from the Ordovician to the Silurian was, significant, uh, was marked by a significant mass extinction event that had a profound impact on the history of life on Earth. Geological events of the Ordovician period. The Ordovician period, which lasted from approximately 485 to 443 million years ago, was marked by several significant geological events and processes that played a crucial role in shaping the Earth's surface and its ecosystems. During the early 
or during the Ordovician, the Earth's land masses were positioned differently than they are today. Gondwana was a supercontinent situated in the southern hemisphere, while Laurentia, a smaller land mass that would become North America, was located in the northern hemisphere. One of the most notable geological features of the Eurovision was the widespread development of shallow seas. These shallow seas covered large portions of the continent, especially Laurentia and Baltica, which was northern Europe and Russia. The warm, shallow marine environments were conducive to the proliferation of marine life, uh, including trilobites, brachiopods, and cephalopods. The Ordovician saw several mountain-building events known as orogenies. These orogenies were located to the tectonic movement of the Earth crust or related to the tectonic movement of the Earth's crust. Notable orogenies during this period included the tectonic orogeny in North, Amer North America and the Grampian orogeny in what is now the United Nation in Scandinavia. We mentioned this briefly before. These mountain building events were driven by the collision and convergence of land masses which featured or, or caused the Earth's crust to fold and uplift, leading to the formation of mountain ranges. Volcanic activity was relatively high during the Ordovician, contributing to changes in the Earth's climate and atmospheric composition. Volcanic eruptions released gases into the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, which could affect global temperatures and ocean chemistry. Towards the end of the Ordovician period, there were indications of cooling and glaciation events. These events are particularly associated with the sorry about this Hernassian stage of the late Ordovician, cooling and the formation of glaciers, particularly in high southern latitudes, resulted in a drop in sea levels and had implications for marine life and, e and ecosystems. One of the sig most significant geological events of the Ordovician period was the Ordovician Silurian Extinction Event, which marked the transition between the Ordovician and Silurian periods. While not as severe as some later extinctions, this event had a significant impact on marine life, leading to the decline of many species, particularly in shallow marine environments. The cause of this extinction, uh, the causes of this extinction event, are not entirely clear, but may be related to cooling and glaciation, changes in sea levels, and potentially volcanic activity. Climate during the Ordovician period. The climate during the Ordovician period, which lasted from approximately 485 to 443 million years ago, was characterised by several distinct features that had a significant influence on the Earth's ecosystems and geological processes. The Ordovician is often described as a period of greenhouse um, climate conditions. It was characterised by relatively high levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide, um, contributing to a warmer and more stable global climate. The high levels of CO2 created a natural greenhouse effect that helped maintain a warm global temperature. This is in stark contrast, contrast to the present day concern of human induced global warming, which is driven by an increase in CO2 levels. One of the most remarkable features of the Ordovician climate was the absence of polar ice caps or extensive glaciation. The planet did not have large scale ice sheets, and both polar regions remained ice-free. The lack of glaciation was primarily due to the warm greenhouse climate um, conditions resulting from elevated CO2 levels. Sea levels during the Ordovician were generally high, particularly due to the greenhouse climate. This high sea level led to the widespread inundation of continents and the formation of shallow seas. 
the high sea levels allowed for the expansion of marine environments and the diversification of marine life, including trilobites, brachiopods and graptolites. Given the prevalence of shallow seas during this time, marine conditions strongly influence the Ordovician climate. The vast expanses of warm, shallow seas played a crucial role in shaping climatic or climate patterns. The thermal inertia of the oceans helped maintain stable, warm temperatures across the planet. While the Ordovician is primarily characterized as a time of overall warmth and stability, there were climatic fluctuations during the period. These fluctuations were related to variations in solar radiation, volcanic activity and other factors. Towards the end of the Ordovician, the climate began to cool and the planet experienced glaciation events particularly in high southern latitudes which we've already touched upon um, tectonic events including mountain building erogenies and volcanic activity could have played a role in mo modulating the Ordovician climate by releasing greenhouse gases and affecting atmospheric circulation patterns fauna during the Ordovician period the fauna of the Ordovician period was marked by significant diversification and the emergence of a variety of life forms, particularly in marine environments. This period, which lasted from approximately 485 to 443 million years ago, which we've said 68,000 times, is often referred to as the age of the trilobites, because trilobites were one of the, mo the dominant and most diverse groups during this time. However, many other fascinating and now extinct species contributed to the rich tapestry of the Ordovician life. Trilobites were amongst the most iconic and diverse organisms of the Ordovician period. They were arthropods, um, characterized by a hard exoskeleton and segmented bodies. Trilobites exhibited an astonishing range of sizes and shapes, from tiny planktonic forms to a large predatory species. They played various ecological roles in marine environments or in ecosystems. Brachiopods were abundant and diverse during the Ordovician and they continued to be major components of marine communities. These organisms resembled clams but were not mollusks. They possessed two shells and were filter feeders anchoring themselves to the seafloor. The Ordovician saw the emergence and diversification of cephalopods, particularly the nautiloids. Nautiloids were squid-like creatures with coiled shells and tentacles. They were efficient predators and important members of the ancient marine food chain. Graptolites were colonial, colonial animals with a unique appearance. They were important for stratigraphy, helping ge geologists date Ordovician rocks. These small planktonic organisms lived in colonies and played a role in the carbon cycle of the ancient oceans. Echinoderms, which included starfish, sea urchins and crinoids, were uh, present during the Ordovician. Crinoids, in particular, were abundant and diverse. Crinoids were uh, filter-feeding marine animals that attached themselves to the sea, sea floor and used feathery appendages to capture food particles from the water. The Ordovician witnessed the emergence of the first jawless fish, representing a critical step in the evolution of vertebrates. These early fish were small, lacked true jaws, and had primitive features compared to modern fish. Sponges, corals, and stromatoporoids, sorry about that one, were among common members of Ordovician marine communities. Stromatoporoids uh, were especially important reef-building organisms. 
bivalves and astropods. Although not as diverse as in later periods, bivalve or clams and gastropods, snails, uh, were also present during the Ordovician. Various types of marine worms and arthropods, um, aside from trilobites, contributed to the diversity of Ordovician life. Flora during the Ordovician period. The Ordovician period is primarily, primarily known for its rich and diverse marine fauna, as terrestrial ecosystems were not as well established during this time. While the Ordovician is often referred to as the age of invertebrates, including trilobites, brachiopods and cephalopods, land plants and terrestrial fauna were in their infancy. Algae, particularly in the form of simple non-vascular and non-woody green and red algae, were among the first plants to colonise terrestrial environments. Algal mats and filaments could have been present in shallow coastal um, areas or around the margins of bodies of water. However, they were gen generally small and inconspicuous. Early plants during the Ordovician were small, non-vascular and lacked roots and leaves. They were more similar to modern brachiophytes such as mosses and liverworts which are some of the most primitive land plants. These plants likely grew close to water sources and dependent on moist conditions for their survival. Some early non-vascular plants, similar to liverworts, may have emerged during the Ordovician, but the fossil record for these organisms is limited. Non-vascular plants do not have a true vascular system for transporting water and nutrients, limiting their size and habitat. While not classified as plants, fungi are significant in the development of terrestrial ecosystems. They played a role in breaking down organic matter and helped helping prepare the soil for future plant colonisation. Terrestrial life during the Ordovician face challenges such as the lack of protective terrestrial habitats, including soil, and a less stable climate. Land surfaces may have been barren, rocky, and not suitable for extensive plant growth. The transition of plants from aquatic to terrestrial habitats required the evolution of adaptations like cuticles to prevent water loss and protective tissues to resist desiccation and UV radiation. The Ordovician land flora, though minimal, would likely have been found in coastal, near shore areas with access to water to ensure their survival in the otherwise in inhospitable terrestrial environments. The Ordovician represents a pivotal time in the evolution of life on Earth but land plants had only just began, begun their journey to colonise terrestrial habitats. It was during the subsequent Silurian and Devonian periods that land plants truly began to diversify and dominate terrestrial ecosystems. The End of the Ordovician Period The end of the Ordovician period marked a crucial transition in Earth's history characterised by a significant geological, climatic and biological cha changes. One of the most notable events at the end of the Ordovician period was the Ordovician Silurian mass extinction. Towards the late Ordovician, the climate began to cool after the long periods of greenhouse uh, conditions that had characterised the early part of the period. The reasons for this cooling are not entirely clear but could have been influenced by factors such as uh, changing ocean circulation patterns and decreased levels of greenhouse gases. The cooling of the climate led to changes in the dis distribution of ice caps and glaciers, especially in the high southern latitudes. The cooling climate resulted in the formation of glaciers, particularly in the high southern latitudes. 
This marked one of the first significant glaciation events in Earth's history. As ice, seas, ice sheets expanded, sea levels dropped, exposing shallow marine environments and impacting marine life that had been thriving in warm, shallow seas. The drop in sea levels due to glaciation events had far-reaching effects. Small, uh, shallow seas that had covered extensive areas of continents during the early and middle Ordovician were reduced, leading to significant ecological changes. The changing sea levels disrupted ecosystems and may have led to the uh, extinction of many species adapted to shallow marine environments. The end of the Ordovician period is marked by the Ordovician Silurian mass extinction event, one of the big five mass extinction events in Earth's history. The exact cause of this extinction event are still debated, but several factors likely contributed, including cooling and glaciation, changing sea levels, and potential uh, volcanic activity. The mass extinction primarily affected marine life, particularly invertebrates such as trilobites, brachiopods, and graptolites. It significantly reduced the diversity of these organisms. Despite the severity of the mass extinction, some groups of organisms survived and went on to play important roles in the subsequent Silurian period and beyond. The extinction event paved the way for new ecological opportunities and the evolution of different species. The end of the Ordovician marked the beginning of the Silurian period, characterized by a different set of environmental conditions and the continued evolution of life on Earth. During the Silurian, marine life diversified once again and land plants continued to evolve and colonize terrestrial environments. Well, that's the uh, Ordovician period. Hopefully you enjoyed that. It was quite interesting actually doing the, the research for this. Um, again, thanks for listening. I truly um, appreciate everyone who listens on Spotify or podcast um, services or on watching it on YouTube as a video um, and enjoying my Minecraft play. Um, I tr it's early days for the podcast. Um, still got I've got four followers, so thank you to the four followers that are listening. Um, if you are listening to the f to this for the first time, don't hesitate to hit that follow button um, so that you um, get notified when new um, episodes come about. And also those of you um, who are on YouTube. Uh, just to let you know, I'm 494 subscribers now, six away from that that elusive 500 target, which I, I just don't seem to be able to get. Um, been trying to get that target for six months now. So if you are watching this and you you'd like to subscribe, why not do it? Go ahead and do so. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and you can always unsubscribe later on if you don't really like the content later on. Anyway, I'm Noob Minus 72. Thank you for listening or watching. Um, wherever you are in the world, have a great morning, evening, afternoon. See you later and take care. Bye for now.